Good evening to all our viewers from the United States and Canada, and to all our viewers from the Philippines. Magandang gabi, magandang umaga po. Welcome to the eighth presentation of Kapi Hansa New York, brought to you by the Filipino American Press Club of New York, in cooperation with the Philippine Department of Tourism New York, Philippine Airlines, and Orient Tours. The Filipino American Press Club of New York is a community of working Filipino American journalists and communication professionals in the New York tri state area whose mission is to be the leading professional organization for journalists that promotes accuracy, truth, and ethics, and is not a part of any political, religious, or government office. For tonight's presentation, let me introduce to you our moderators. Maribir Montibon, publisher and executive editor of OSM Online Magazine, and the past president of Phil Am Press Club of New York. Grace Labakis, president of Synergy Marketing and current vice president of the Phil Am Press Club of New York. And for our question and answer portion, the ever popular Don Tagala, multimedia journalist of ABS-CBN News and the Filipino Channel and the current president of the Phil Am Press Club of New York. With more than 7,600 islands consisting of rice paddies, volcanoes, mega metropolis, world-class surf and diving spots, and an endemic wildlife, the Philippines is one of the most dazzling and diverse countries in all of Asia. It is the home of some of the world's best beaches. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to Kapihan sa New York 8th virtual presentation, Las Plazas, Las Playas, Filipinas. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jobert. And uh, now I would like to introduce our special guest who is going to um, give us an inspirational message. He is no other than our Consul General, El Mercato. From Tripoli to New York City, 
Consul El Mercato hit the ground running when he came to office on March 30, 2021, while we were still reeling from the pandemic and um, anticipating um, the escalation of Asian hate crimes. Honjen Kato is a journalist and a diplomat whose first assignment was with the Philippine Permanent Mission to the UN in 2003 to 2010. As a journalist, he began writing for Malaya and Philippine News and Features, where I also came from. And from then on, he came a long way as a diplomat and as a journalist. Today, Konjen has always been saying that he wants to be accessible to all Filipinos in the East Coast. And so he is. So thank you, Konjen, and welcome. We would love to hear your inspirational message. Thank you, Marie Lear, uh, to all our Kababayan, online viewers, friends, ladies and gentlemen, magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. Magandang umaga po dyan sa Pilipinas. First of all, I would like to thank once again the Filipino American Press Club of New York and their partners, the Philippine Tourism Office here in New York, Philippine Airlines and Orient Tours for hosting another presentation to highlight our campaign to invite Kababayan and their friends to visit the Philippines. The focus of tonight's episode are the beaches of the Philippines, spe specifically those located in the provinces of Batangas, Samar, Bohol, and Source of Goy. I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge and thank our panelists, Governor Hermilando Mandanas of Batangas, Governor Reynolds Michael Tan of Samar, Governor Arthur Yap of Bohol, and Governor Francis Escudero of Source of Goy who will share with our participants and viewers the various offerings their provinces have with regard to their beach resorts and other tourist destinations. Promoting our country's tourist attractions to both Balikbayan and foreign visitors are crucial, especially in these times when the COVID pandemic affected the world tourism industry. Because of the pandemic, world economies really took a serious hit. As we all know, tourism is vital for the success of many economies, especially those at the local level. Tourism creates jobs, develops the infrastructure of the locality, and equally important, promotes cultural exchanges between locals and their foreign visitors. Tourism not only creates jobs, but also actually impacts nearly all sectors of the local economy. Sectors that benefit from tourism include, among others, agriculture, communication, health, transportation, and even public works. Thus, by encouraging people to visit, we are all assisting the economy, not only of the city or province, but also that of the entire country. With the pandemic slowly easing up, the government has begun to slowly allow more visitors to the country. Since May, we have reinstated the Balikbayan program, which allows former Filipinos and foreign dependents of former Filipinos to enter the country. We have also stepped up the ongoing vaccination program, now on track with nearly 1.6 million doses administered in the past seven days alone. Currently, the Philippines has vaccinated 6.1% of the population since March and is at the daily average of 79,011 doses being administered. This is the second fastest in the region. We're expecting more vaccines to arrive within the next few months with 3 million doses that arrive in the last two weeks alone and nearly 21 million more arriving in the next two months. We are on track with having more of our citizens vaccinated. At the rate we are doing our vaccinations, we are hopeful that we may lift more restrictions and allow more foreign visitors into the country soon. We welcome the latest announcement reducing the quarantine period for vaccinated individuals arriving from overseas to just seven days. We definitely share the optimism of the tourism industry of a recovery sooner than expected. Tonight's forum will share with our participants a sampling of the thousand of wonderful beaches that our archipelago has been blessed with. We will also get to know about the tourism programs of the provinces of Batangas, Bohol, Samar, and Sorsogon 
that would have only ensure that tourism will bounce back stronger than it was before, but that all visitors will once again enjoy Filipino hospitality and the natural beauty of the Philippines. Maraming salamat po at mabuhay. Magandang gabi. Thank you, Paul Ponjen. Thank you for that inspiring message and the updates, Conjun El Mercato. We are honored and humbled with your presence tonight. Please stay with us as we feature the beautiful destinations in the Philippines. Good evening to our viewers in the US and Canada, and good morning, Philippines. I'm Grace Labagis, one of your moderators for tonight's Kapihan. We do have beautiful beach resorts in Batangas. That was really a, a, a lovely video. Moving on with our program, let me start by introducing our first panelist, the Honorable Governor Hermilando Dodo Mandanas, who has been the governor of the province of Batangas since 2016. Known to his friends as Dodo, he previously served this position from 1995 until 2004. He was a member of the House of Representatives of the Philippines, representing the second district of Batangas from 2004 until 2013. He finished his Bachelor of Science in Commerce degree as consistent Dean Lister at De La Salle University. He then became a university scholar at the University of the Philippines and studied, studied his master's degree in business administration, where he graduated in the honor roll. He obtained his honorary degree as doctorate in humanities at Batangas State University. Governor Mandanas was the first governor to give honorarium to Barangay health workers, Barangay nutrition scholars, 
Barangay Service Point Officers, Barangay Tanod, to name only a few. He was also the first to give field health benefits to the same beneficiaries. And lastly, he was also the first to grant scholarships to deserving students. He is married to Regina Reyes Mandanas. Good evening, Governor Mandanas. Welcome to Capihan, San New York. Or good morning. Good evening, good evening. good evening to you and well, good morning to our uh, local uh, uh, participants in this very, very important Capihan. It is really uh, an honor and privilege for the province of Batangas to be able to participate in this very important activity. And of course, you would like to thank our sponsors, uh, organizers of uh, this uh, Kapihan, because it gives us the opportunity to be able to share our culture, our arts, the blessings, our natural blessings, coming from our Lord, well, number one, of course, and we consider as our number one uh, in Batangas, well, I guess in other places too, uh, like the other provinces that uh, are represented here by their uh, honorable and energetic governors from Bohol, from Sursugon, and from Samar. And, uh, and that is the reason why we have that is our concept of tourism, but to be able to share. Well, in Batangas primarily, we would like to share with our fellow Filipinos so that they would really be uh, proud and have this, uh, that what we have here in our country. And definitely with the rest of the world. Uh, and we consider tourism as uh, the very effective way of being able to do this sharing. Right? More of enriching really not only the body, but the soul. Our, our culture, our, which includes our history, our traditions, right? uh, our heritage, and our arts which uh, I would say in, in Batangas, we try to set the example and we consider not only uh, like performing arts, not only uh, singing or poetry or uh, dances in performing arts, but we consider also uh, entrepreneurship, economics, business. For us, that is also an art. And uh, of course, the natural blessings that we have, which uh, I would say would be uh, very specific and in Batangas. So that's why our tourism could be divided uh, in several aspects. Uh, what we want to share. Uh, and this would be, let's say, our culture. And here is expressed, culture includes religion. So we have our, uh, this is expressed in our heritage, uh, in our heritage towns, like in Taal, where we have uh, keep the, the, the traditional houses since, uh, the 18th, 17th century up to now. And we, wherein we have uh, the biggest uh, basilica in the whole of Asia. And that is the Taal Basilica, which right now is being improved. It's the biggest in the whole of Asia. And uh, likewise, uh, we have in terms of our uh, religious tourism, we have a million a year during normal times in the uh, shrine of Padre Pio in, uh, in Santo Tomas. And then of course, the other churches that we have. And uh, 
when it comes to the natural blessings that we have peculiar uh, we have of course we have the uh, well known worldwide globally uh, attractive uh, taal volcano landscape which includes uh, the volcano which has uh, which is on a lake and in the volcano island also an island within the lake and in the volcano itself there is a lake and there is an island in the middle of the lake of the volcano so uh, which symbolizes really the we would like to think the spirit of uh, the batangueños you know always energetic but sometimes uh, could be uh, excessive like the when it exploded uh, last year and fortunately, you know, on the day of the explosion, nobody died. And uh, well, uh, the day after, only those uh, there was only one who who returned, and that was the casualty that we had. And uh, so, but it, of course, even that attracts tourism. You would say the dark tourism type, huh? but one which. Uh, we are still trying to develop, which is going on, uh, is really something unique in the province of Batangas. This is being the center of the center of marine biodiversity of the whole world. Uh, uh, you know that uh, marine biodiversity means it has it, the area or the, the underwater has the most number of species concentrated, marine species in the whole world. So the center of marine biodiversity of the whole world is in the Philippines. And this is from Marine Duque all the way to Batangas, including part of Mindoro. Uh, so, but the center of the center is actually along Batangas Bay the Verde Island Passage. Here, you would have the most number of marine species as confirmed by the Smithsonian, which of course everybody knows, and the Conservation International, and then the WWF, and even the United Nations. So uh, that is why it is, well, the second is Indonesia, where they have it. So the center of the very center is right there in the Manila, in the Batangas Bay area. Uh, that includes, uh, you know, from the towns of San Juan, Lubo, Batangas City, uh, Mabini, which everybody knows, uh, uh, the Anilao diving is an internationally recognized uh, skin diving uh, location, all the way to Nasubu, where you have the beautiful beaches, even for of uh, Tali Beach, of Punta Puego, and uh, many more in that, in, in, along that coastline. So when it comes to, there are many beaches all over the world, of course, but there is only one center of the center of marine biodiversity. Huh? And along that place, the private sector, of course, helps us uh, in developing that. So. Right now, there is that Monte Maria development there, which we later on will be shown, uh, where we have the tallest monument of what we call uh, the mother of all Asia. Huh? This is the Monte Maria. So for you in New York, you could imagine that it is taller than the Statue of Liberty. Huh? Uh, it is. Uh, probably four times bigger. Uh, there in New York, you have your Statue of Liberty with a small service elevator. Here we have three service elevators. Not no, not service elevator. Really for people. Huh? Uh, so in terms of area, it's probably uh, probably five times more than the Statue of Liberty. And definitely uh, taller than the Statue of Liberty. So it is th there in, in Batanga City, right in front of the Verde Island Passage. 
uh, looking outward to the rest of Asia. So uh, these are the Dutch examples of natural blessings which uh, uh, we are developing and we want to share. How by tourism? Huh? In terms of arts, well, we also show what others would show in terms of our dances and our cuisine. Huh? But uh, I would say what is unique with Batangas in tourism is what I call the entrepreneurial tourism, huh? uh, which uh, would be the development of infrastructure. That's why Batangas right now, the Port of Batangas, is the number one, is the gateway when it comes to traveling by sea. It's called the nautical highway. We have three times more passengers, including tourists, of course, huh? passing through the uh, port of Batangas. And that is why we are putting there uh, a quarantine hub uh, in line with what is happening now, where we, we are not only been preparing for the new normal, which will be coming. Uh, we believe that having uh, a quarantine area, uh, you know, especially in Batangas, we're in, uh, you know, three times more passengers than the Port of Manila, as I mentioned. That's over 7 million a year. Uh, going to Visayas and Mindanao, going to Bohol, going to Cebu, going to Davao, uh, Visayas and Mindanao, and other places, including Samar. Uh, and likewise, those from Visayas and Mindanao going to Luzon. Uh, the port is constantly being expanded, and we have set up already there a quarantine hub where you have uh, the testing, isolation units, clinics, uh, fleet of ambulances in case of emergency. Uh, so, and we are expanding it. We are expanding the, the our quarantine hub. And that would be helpful to the tourism, of course. So we are prepared for the infrastructure. And as I said, business is an art. So it's also, we want to share how we look at it. So it's not only singing, it's not only dancing uh, that we could show, uh, but we could show that Batangas is the uh, most powerful province from the point of electric power. You know, uh, We supply the most number of megawatts for the entire country. Uh, we have more than 5,300 and we have another one thousand megawatts now under construction but delayed by this uh, pandemic and also uh, the significance because of our base uh, we have uh, 65 percent of the fuel requirement of the entire country uh, passing through uh, Batangas in our Balayan Bay in our uh, so all you know whether it's the big companies like uh, Chevron or what we call it Caltech Shell and Shell and Petron, our local, Phoenix and the others like CO. They past two years, aviation gas, uh, gasoline, diesel, kerosene, uh, they all pass here. And uh, we have 100% of the natural gas fuel coming from Palawan, uh, domestic. They, they feed well, 3,200 megawatts. We have uh, natural gas. The rest, we have even uh, solar, 100 megawatts. And we have uh, also uh, coal, around 1,500. Uh, so, uh, and we have geothermal. That's how, how much we really consider it as an art. Huh? Uh, we have that in, in geothermal also, 200, 200 megawatts. Of course, our sugar also has. Uh, so, but, uh, so the business side of it, we have the only petrochemical plant with naphtha cracker in Batangas. So the entrepreneurship, they, uh, in, well, I could consider it as a instinct or uh, talent of businessmen could see 
the beauty of Batangas. So we have a lot of what you would call probably business tourism. Uh, as I said, because tourism is a matter of sharing. So, uh, so we have the variety, diversity uh, of uh, tourism activities, which will be shown. And uh, this is the, but what you want to promote is really our concept. We look at tourism, not only as economics, but we look at it as uh, more of sharing the soul, the culture, the art of, of Batangas, first our fellow Filipinos, that we are blessed, that we have all the necessary ingredients really to, to be happy. Huh? to enjoy life and to be able to live in peace and unity and progress, both body and soul. So that is our program in the province of Batangas that we would like to invite everybody. And thank you for Kapihan. Well, every time you talk about Kapihan, you talk about coffee, you always think of Barako coffee from Batangas. So, what I did is just to highlight really what our like uh, marginal advantage in our desire to share happiness with our people and the people of the entire world. Maraming salamat sa inyo lahat. Mabuhay kayo. the waves cut through me hypnotized by the sounds i'm breathing in hold tight hold tight chemicals collide hold tight hold tight hold tight dripping lights paint the sky so much what you were watching ladies and gentlemen was the video of the island beautiful island province of Samar and thank you um, Governor Manandas of Batangas for sharing the wonderful um, beautiful natural gifts of Batangas as well we will have a forum in a few minutes but for now I am honored to introduce the governor of Samar 
Governor Michael Tan, who became governor of the province of Samar in 2019 when he took over the reins from his mother, Governor, the late Governor de la Grossa Tan. We are sorry. I know you are still grieving, Governor Tan. But um, prior to this uh, position of his, he was a businessman and a graduate of culinary arts and hotel management from the International School of Culinary Arts and Hotel Management in Quezon City. Governor Tan continued the Spark Summer Development Agenda, which focuses on health, agriculture, and tourism development. He is also an advocate for youth, art, and culture, and environmental protection under the Yes for Summer campaign. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Governor Tan of Samar. Hi, thank you. Uh, good morning in Samar. Thank you for joining us. Go. Good morning in Samar and good morning on your oh good evening on your side of the world. This is Governor Reynolds Tan. Reynolds Michael Tan. I feel privileged that the province of Samar is being featured here in Kapihan in New York. Uh, to give you some bits and pieces of Samar, while it is one of the less traveled, underrated tourist destination. However, just as it is, we are just about uh, comfortable for Samar is not too exploited on things over and above some, something that can destroy its natural aesthetic uh, and beauty. The people here are very warm, hospitable, and characteristically resilient to the many calamities and phenomenal devastation. We are at home to various disaster, but we still practice grace under pressure. So thank you very much. Uh, we have a few uh, slides to present. Start and go uh, So the first slide here, uh, your journey will start in the San Juaneco Bridge. Uh, Samar is the third largest island in the Philippines and San Juanico Bridge is the longest, still the longest bridge in the Philippines. Soon, uh, the San Juanico Bridge uh, will be nearing its completion, the aesthetic lighting of the uh, San Juanico Bridge. So this will boost uh, the or highlight the beauty of the San Juanico Bridge uh, with this uh, sounds and lights uh, feature. Uh, currently, we are still using the Tacloban Airport as the main uh, gateway to Samar, which is located in Tacloban, Leyte. But uh, recently, we have just inaugurated the Calbayog Airport uh, in Calbayog City located in the uh, first district of Samar, which is a, uh, an international standard airport. And also currently, uh, the, on, uh, the Buri Airport in Katbalogan City, which is uh, the capital city of the province of Samar, uh, is nearing its completion. It is also an international standard uh, airport. So the Spark Samar uh, development agenda focuses uh, on tourism, agriculture, health, uh, and youth development, among others. A year, uh, a year pandemic in a, a year pandemic in this situation was a complex uh, of everything, of fear, hardship. And we acknowledge the restricted situation, acceptance, and realization. That one year, though, is not turning into an ordinary issue of the matter of a resilient Samarna. And now it is time to restart all tourism activities that were halted. For San Juanico, it is the beginning of several opportunities. It is the bridge that welcomes every tourist and connects it to all aspect of socio-cultural dynamics. It is the bridge that connects closely to the community and the tourists as a form of sustainable tourism. 
it is the the bridge of love but also the bridge of economic prosperity so some are some more uh some are uh is uh is highlighting or we are rich in natural attractions uh, managed by people's organizations so these are the the uh the tourist spots in Samar, the Sohoton Caves and Natural Bridge, which is a world-class uh, bridge and a friendly bridge. Uh, Samar is a refuge to the largest cave system in the country, many of which can be found in, in the Sohoton Natural Bridge Natural Park in the town of Pasay. But due to the breadth of the cave network, only a few caves have fully ex explored to this day. The easiest to explore is the park of Panahulugan Cave. The iconic na summer natural bridge can also be found in this park. A 15-minute leisurely kayak ride upstream will take you the through limestone cliffs, thick forest, and other rock formations around the riverbanks. Then, as it as if appearing out of nowhere, the breathtaking beauty of natural uh, bridge will take you by surprise. So, I, Marabot Rock Islands. Actually, I am in Marabot right now. Uh, kasi may ano kami, meron kaming uh, seminar for the uh, preparation of the budget. So, I am here in Marabot. Marabot is home to the resorts here in Samar. So in Marabo, there are rock islets, uh, home to a cluster of scenic rock formations in the middle of the ocean. These are natural rock islets in different shapes, believed to have been formed from many typhoons, changes in the wind, and earthquake, perhaps that weathered these rocks into an amazing feature. And the municipality of Marabot is capitalizing on the beauty of these rock islets to share it to the world for economic growth. The Lulugayan Falls and uh, Eco Village. So, kanina po yung video na nakita niyo was uh, taken in Lulugayan uh, Falls. The majestic and panoramic Lulugayan Falls and the rapids in Kalbiga is a sight to behold. It's a thund thunderous curtain of water spilling into the multi level pools in the Kalbiga River is worth the sh short trek through the hilly forest so visitors can swim in the pools walk in the waterfalls or relax in the cottages just beside it so maliit po siya na niagara falls the next feature is the torpedo extreme boat ride also featured in the video uh, shown earlier olut river is the town is in the town of paranas it is home to the Torpedo Boat Extreme Ride, a thrilling journey on a uniquely designed boat that barrels through rapids on a 10.5 kilometer scenic stretch of river. When travelers reach the destination called Dennis Point, they can swim in the cool waters and picnic on the massive boulders that line the river. For the more daring, a lip in the gushing water is a must try. The Saob Cave. Uh, actually, the town of Basay has a mat weaving tradition that has become a well known cottage industry. These mats are durable, uh, feature colorful and unique designs, and most of all, are very comfortable to lie or sit on. Visitors can drop to the Saob Cave for the cool environment, help strengthen the Tico grass while being woven into the popular mats by the locals. These mats are also used to create various fashion and household items. The Paranas Eco Trail and Birding Site. Samar is one of the most underrated destination that has the most diverse ecosystem featuring nature at its best. One satisfying product 
in Paranas is its eco trail and breeding site inside the forest. The trail is a combination of partly graded and challenging assault range and about one kilometer in distance. It has an altitude of 300 meters and highlighted with different stations, demo farm for hammocks for a brief relaxation, a view deck on a on to give an eye filling view of the amazing, fantastic part of the tropical lowland forest and tree houses being connected by hanging bridge, which also serves as the message massage area. The Langun Gubing of Caves. Langun Gubing of Cave in the town of Kalbiga is an underground system that should be in every caving enthusiast list. It is the largest karst cave in the Philippines and one of the biggest in Asia, notably for its deep caverns and massive rock formations. The Lobo Cave. Lobo Cave in the town of Yabong is trouted by some to be the most be beautiful inside. The cave entrance may look underwhelming, but the modest entry definitely belies the beauty inside. One of the highlights of the cave is the angel wings, made even more mystical by the sparkling calcite crystal deposits all over the walls and ceilings, cascading water over the rock formation and collects into pools and the beguile the exhausted traveler. San Juan by the Bay, a 400 meter bamboo uh, boardwalk that weaves through a thick mangrove forest that leads to a floating restaurant where visitors can relax while taking in the spectacular view of the San Juanico Bridge. The Candiwata uh, Rock Formation of Daram, Municipality of Daram, is a newly discovered tourist attraction that will give you a glimpse of the famous jaw-dropping and enchanted destination that is present in everyone's bucket list. Coron in Palawan, Candidwata also offers a beach for the water enthusiast. The Balantak Falls, located in Basay Samar, is one of the tallest falls in the Philippines and has an estimated uh, time of 25 minutes of travel from the main town of Samar. It has three waterfalls in the said area. So this is the spark uh, circuit. Uh, the Sama, the Santarita and Basai. So uh, if you come here, uh, you will start your journey for your travel uh, to San Juanico Bridge, then to San Juan by the Bay, Buscada Church, where it is an, a century old uh, church here in Basai, the St. Michael Church, which is also a century old uh, church also located in Basai, the Sohoton Caves that I have earlier mentioned, and the Natural Bridge beside the uh, Sohoton Cave. So the Spark Sama Circuit uh, 2, Marabot and Basai also. Uh, so uh, it features the Marabot, Marabot Islet, uh, the La Cucina de Marabot, which, which serves the local delicacies uh, in Samar and also being managed by the People's Organization. Uh, and then the Saob Cave, uh, that is also uh, being managed by a People's Organization as well. The Spark Samar Circuit uh, 3 uh, in Calviga. So Samar Binagol Production Site. Binagol actually is a uh, local uh, kakanin and uh, one of the best in Samar, best pasalubong for balikbayans. The Tinolang Manok, which is also famous here in Samar, and the Lulugayan Falls, which is uh, the one of the largest uh, waterfalls here in Region 8. The Spark Samar Circuit 4, which is Paranas and Yabo, so the Ulit River, which is a 10.5 kilometer river, uh, which uh, connects 
uh, somewhere to its neighboring provinces, the Paranas Eco Trail and Birding Site, and the uh, Cusina de Alejandria, where you can try the tahong uh, products uh, that is being that is the main product of the town Yabo. So other upcoming sites developments with Tandaya Trail Tree. Uh, currently, we are doing uh, na delay lang because of the pandemic, pero there will be uh, new destinations which are the Tinago Ruins, the century-old uh, church of the Jesuits in uh, Tarangnan Municipality, the story of the lost city of Biringan. I, I don't know if you've heard about this, pero this is uh, one of the most uh, featured uh, stories of a big and lost city uh, within Samar, na may mga airport and everything, sa mga nipa, <laughs> and the magro crabs farm also in uh, the same place of the lost city. So other upcoming site developments with Tandaya Trail, the Pinis Pisakan Falls, Blanca Aurora Falls, and Pagodan Rapids. So if you've noticed, most of the attractions here are falls, caves, and rapids. Uh, our beaches here are also good, but I don't think that it is as good as those na we don't have white beaches here. But if you are a fan of uh, nature, uh, then it is worth also trying uh, to come to Sakamar. Other upcoming site with Tandaya Trail, also the Mat Matugnao Cold Spring and the Kaseya Processing, uh, which are uh, located in the municipalities of Kandara and Matukina. Uh, we have other programs and activities. So recently, we have just uh, concluded uh, the project New Seal. Uh, since our thrust is the uh, the tourism and the agriculture in the in Samar, we have changed our uh, provincial seal from it is now to a new one because the old one depicts uh, logging and mining. Both are illegal now in South. So uh, we have also recently launched the book, uh, Ladawan, which, which features the endemic species here in Samar, including uh, uh, endemic species such as birds and plants, and also the, the tourist attractions. So it is available also. Uh, also, the cultural heritage values interpretations towards education and utilization for community development, a cultural mapping uh, continuing project, a way to develop values formation curriculum using cultural mapping data, and to pilot the modules in selected elementary schools in the province. So we have partnered with DepEd uh, for uh, para ma, yung mga uh, cultural sites namin dito is ma-include sa curriculum ng school uh, para din yung mga students is magkaroon ng understanding about the tourism industry here in Samar and also the natural wonders. So it, also, it is also one way of promoting uh, yung positivity within Samar. So another feature in, here in Samar is the soon to be completed Ilog tourism. So since Samar has one of the longest uh, river system also in the Philippines, uh, it is also worth trying that uh, the Ilog tourism, it's a uh, community immersion. So pwedeng sumakay sa isang sa boat and then go around the river system bumaba sa mga selected areas that we have also recently established para ma-appreciate din po yung mga, uh, mga areas na pupuntahan dito within sa river system na yun. Recently also, we have just uh, completed the Rapid Economic Impact Assessment which focuses on the 
since there was a pandemic, uh, tinignan po namin kung ano po ba yung uh, naging impact among sa mga kap- mga somewhere noon. So recently we have just completed that at the final stage na po uh, of the ano, assessment. Uh, we are also uh, on the phase two of our bid to be part of the UNESCO UNESCO Heritage Site, uh, which is the Samar Island Natural Park. So it is uh, it will be uh, one way of ensuring that we can protect the nature here in Samar, and we have partnered with the two provinces beside us, which are Northern Samar and Eastern Samar for this project. Uh, we have also the cultural cultural food mapping. So Samar uh, will not only be a place for relaxation, but also a food destination. So we are developing the cultural and food uh, part na ng ng uh, ng mga heirloom dishes and it will be featuring the heirloom dishes of the century old dishes dito sa Samar so uh, we are also doing that tapos we are also enhancing the brand value of the secret dishes of Samar a marketing and promotion programs for Samar's culinary, culinary heritage uh, tourism program so, meron po kaming uh, five theme book editions and promotional videos na ginawa. Tapos recently also, uh, we are practicing na the health uh, and safety protocols for a safe reopening of the, uh, the tourism industry here in Samar. So, as you can see, this is an executive order and, we- and also adapted as an ordinance in the Sangkuniang Pandalawigan of Samar. So, uh, that would be the last of my uh, slides. Uh, thank you very much. And I hope na makapunta po kayo. Bisita po kayo sa Samar. We have a lot to offer. And we are continuing to develop the places, the infrastructure, uh, para po maging comfortable yung mga bibisita po dito sa amin. So thank you very much and uh, good evening. Lamang mga salamat. Well, thank you for taking us to the beautiful spots and attractions in Samar Gov- Governor Tan, and we hope to visit your province very soon. And that was an amazing video of Bohol. It's my honor to introduce the Governor of the Province of Bohol, Governor Arthur Art Yap. Attorney Arthur C. Yap served as Secretary of Agriculture of the Philippines from 2004 to 2010 and Presidential Management Staff Director General in 2005. He represented the 3rd Congressional District of Bohol in the House of Representatives from 2010 to 2019, finishing his term as Deputy Speaker for the Visayas. He has been awarded the the Order of Isabella by Spain and the Order of La Candula for his services to the Philippine government. He studied management and economics at the Ateneo de Manila University and holds a Juris Doctor in Law from the same university. Good evening, magandang gabi po at magandang humaga, Governor Yap. Good evening, uh, everyone, um, especially to our friends there in North America. Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Majong gabi kaninyo diha. And good morning to those who are watching here in the Philippines. Magandang umaga po sa lahat. Allow me to thank first the Filipino-American Press Club of New York 
and its active president, Kabayan Jobert Opulencia. The Department of Tourism in New York, Philippine Airlines, and Orient Tours for this invitation to share updates about Bohol on this prestigious Kapihan sa New York program. To my co-panelists, Kapatid Gov. Uh, Chief Escudero of Sorsogon, Manong Governor Ermilando Dodo Mandanas of Batangas, ating kaibigan si Governor Michael Tan of Samar, to our hardworking Consul General in New York, Elmer Cato, and the rest of the PhilAm community in the United States and Canada watching, as well as supporters and friends of the Filipino community. Maajong adlaw kanatong tanan. A great day to all of us. As we all know, the impact of COVID-19 to Bohol and to the entire Philippine tourism industry has been devastating. Tourism being Bohol's major economic center and source of livelihood uh, pre-COVID sustained the province's economic growth over the last few years. However, the sudden fall in tourist arrivals and the plunge in demand caused severe economic and social consequences within and beyond tourism. More than 200,000 Boholanos lost their jobs and closed their businesses, with many coming from the micro, small, medium-sized enterprises. Bohol's annual 15 billion peso tourism revenues disappeared overnight. Panglao and Tagbilaran City were like ghost towns last year. The once busy area of Alona in Panglao was left with tables and chairs turned down and none but the residents walking around. Looking back one year and three months ago, I had to make the challenging decision to impose general community quarantine in Bohol and to restrict incoming tourism traffic even ahead of the national capital region. This was amid the hushed protest of many tourism stakeholders who were not totally convinced that my decision was the best decision for the safety of the people and the economy of Bohol. We were the first province to declare a community quarantine and block the entry of tourists even before President Duterte Duterte's announcement to put the Philippines under the enhanced community quarantine system. Like many parts of the Philippines last year, we had to contend with curfews, ordering senior citizens and the youth to stay indoors, and most of all, strictly enforcing a clampdown on our revered cultural and fiesta activities. However, we continue to allow infrastructure and construction, quarrying, agriculture, and fisheries, as they are critical sectors to continue operating and stay open. Initially, there was also great hesitancy to allow Bukulanos to come back home even by local residents, but the continuing effort to explain to people that it was every Filipino's right to travel and to come home allowed us to convince the local community to accept fellow province mates home under strict protocols. To date, we have brought home close to 100,000 Bukulanos from March 2020 to the present. For Buholanos who could not come home, we remitted close to 30 million pesos to their domestic locations to support them through these tight times, while spending more than 30 million pesos in medical assistance funds for local Buholanos in the province. Aside from that, food production programs in agriculture and food subsidies, as well as cash for work programs, were also increased substantively in an effort to just keep the province afloat above the waterline. Most of all, even as we focused on agriculture and food to ensure Bohol's food security, we kept our eyes focused more on reopening tourism. We developed our own contact tracing card system very early and upgraded the services of our establishments. We legislated safety protocols and created our own provincial accreditation program for establishments. Uh, this seal, which we worked with, with the Department of Tourism and the Tourism Promotions Board, was called the Ultimate Bohol Experience or UBE Seal for Tourism Establishments. We took up the challenge of Secretary Bernard Romulo Puya to prepare for bubble tourism. And by September 2020 of last year, accepted the hosting of FITEX 2020, our government's largest annual show to sell Philippine leisure and vacation properties. Effectively, we were able to show that hybrid physical and virtual events were possible for meetings, incentives, conferences, and exhibitions or MICE events. Using the FITEX platform, we were able to show that even during the pandemic, our support for the performing arts continued as well through our DASIG or ENCOURAGE programs. 
we sought to do just that, encourage and enliven our more than 30,000 artists and performers by featuring them weekly in more than 50 online shows as a way to entertain many who were depressed, but also to support performers and artists and those who have lost their income. Our Christmas programs called Kasadya or Rejoice continue to celebrate Bolanon culture through life-sized Belens and Visayan Christmas choral competitions where towns vied against each other to present their offerings of ad adoration to the images of the Holy Family serenaded by their town's choral entries. Drawing from lessons last year, we maintain today just one testing protocol for all of those who will arrive uh, to Bohol, requiring just one, a negative PCR test result within 72 hours before arrival as a requirement for entry to Bohol by domestic clients. Complying with that, visitors are exempted from isolation and quarantine protocols. Tours are also handled by DOT accredited operators and are allowed to visit only accredited tourism sites. Bohol also uses a system that spares you the tiresome effort of filling up contact tracing forms wherever you go. We have a QR code system for all incoming tourists. Once you register as a tourist in our tourist portal, you will be given a unique QR code, which you will be asked to present upon arrival upon at the Panglao, at the Bohol Panglao International Airport and in destinations you will be visiting around our island province. Today, as we speak, Bohol has started to vaccinate its tourism workers since last week. The first province in the Philippines that was given additional vaccines to do so in an effort to assure tourist arrivals and local residents of safety for all amidst these troubled times. If plans push through, there is a great possibility that Bohol would be one of the provinces allowed in just a matter of about two months to accept international arrivals direct in select bilateral air agreements with key foreign destinations under the Green Lanes program of the Department of Tourism. As you consider your travel options in the days to come, keep Bohol in mind with its diverse range of attractions all in one destination. We have the attractions from ridge to reef, water and underwater sites, white sand beaches, hills, farm sites, sandbars, chocolate hills, tarsiers, heritage churches, national cultural properties, award-winning choirs, great food and culture all in one destination. So whether it is just for two to say, I do, or for a group to bond with as a family or friends. Let me invite you to take this time here and now to recapture lost chances of treasured moments with families, friends, and loved ones, and make those moments come alive again. Your visit will help rebuild trust and confidence in travel and will go a long way in helping our country recover from the ravages of this pandemic. In closing, allow me to announce that we have launched the Balik sa Bohol program, wherein the tourism sector is giving a year-long discount on tourism accommodations and services for those who wish to visit Bohol. With strong support from the Department of Tourism, we aim to make Mod Bohol a model for safe travel during these challenging times. It's still more fun in the Philippines. Come home to the better normal. See you in Bohol. Daghang salamat at inyong tanan. Maraming salamat, uh, Governors Mandana, Stan, and Yap. So mabuhay, my name is Don Tagala, multimedia journalist for ABS-CBN News and president of the Phil M. Press Club of New York. And I will be moderating the Q&A part of our virtual event. So please post your questions on the chat box and we will call you or read your questions from there. Um, you may direct your question to a specific speaker or to the whole panel. Um, so be before that, I have a question for the governors. The governors, um, when your region finally re reopens for tourists to tourists, uh, what would be the most challenging part, do you think, in reopening your province for tourism? When it, when it comes to, especially when it comes to making it easy for tourists to be able to visit your um, provinces while making it fun and safe for the tourists and Balik clients. So let me ask uh, Governor Mandanas first.
Well, actually, the, the, most, the most challenging would be compliance with the uh, protocol, the guidelines issued by the national, uh, uh, by our national uh, interagency task force uh, to have the discipline and to have the, uh, well, the obedience, I would say, to these guidelines. Because for us, uh, that would be the number one concern, huh? compliance. And this would apply not only to the tourists, but of course, all the others, uh, uh, people, you know, getting in touch with them or having sort of social distancing, of course. So that is the most challenging uh, that we have to attend to. Uh, really having this discipline and having this uh, spirit of obedience to this one, because number one is really the health of our people, tourists included, of course. Thank you, Governor. Governor Tan. Or Governor Yap. Don, um, good evening to you there no? in uh, North America. Uh, Manong Dodong Mandanas is uh, very correct in saying that a very critical issue right now is the pandemic. So, um, we are very cognizant of this fact, but we try to make this as uh, convenient for you as possible. Uh, right now, uh, we are still not allowed to accept uh, directly international foreign arrivals, but for the domestic uh, uh, clients we have, uh, we just have one testing protocol. Um, present to us a verified uh, uh, PCR test in the last 72 hours that you are negative and you can come into the province of Bohol. Uh, that's it. Uh, upon arrival in Bohol, or at least before you arrive in Bohol, you're also required to download your own QR code. When you come to Bohol, uh, you just show your QR code and we will let you in and you will use that as your contact tracing app as you visit different sites around the province. And uh, as you do so, you're also escorted by accredited uh, tourist operators and uh, tour guides. And um, it's also presumed that you will be st staying in a accredited tourism establishment, which has also been upgraded. So uh, upgraded in the sense that um, we required all our tourism establishments to level up and to benchmark with the best, especially with regard in preparing themselves and making sure that they are capacitated to accept uh, uh, domestic uh, and uh, in the future uh, uh, tourist uh, clients. So it's it's that simple. You want to come to Bohol uh, at this point in time for all the domestic clients that we have, present us a 72-hour negative PCR test, which you can easily get all over uh, the NCR. You know, Don, uh, right now, the Philippine National Red Cross operates saliva test PCRs uh, in more than 50 malls. It costs 2,000 pesos. You just drive up. You reserve online in 10 minutes. They get the saliva swab from you. And in six hours, the results are out. And you present that to us. Um, if, if it's uh, negative, then you can come. And we don't require you to be isolated or quarantined when you visit the home. Governor, you quick follow-up. What about the fully vaccinated travelers? That's what we're working on right now with, uh, um, uh, with the Department of Tourism for uh, foreign arrivals. As I said in my remarks, we are applying for the Green Lanes program where uh, we're going to enter into special bilateral air agreements with certain capitals and certain destinations. And one of the preconditions that we're working on right now is not only a negative 72 hour PCR test, but we're also asking <laughs> So if they're fully vaccinated, they have to get the PCR I think somebody has, right. So um, when, um, when you have your negative PCR test and you're fully vaccinated, that's what we're working on right now for the Green Lanes program, then you will be allowed to come into Bohol. Thank you, Governor. Governor Yap, may do you, have, do you want to add uh, something, Governor? Yes, he's still here. OK. Um, we'll proceed to the next question. Um, I'm going to call on Marivir Montaban for your question. Marivir. Thanks, Don. Um, I have a question for Governor Mandanas. 
Governor, um, how are you managing the current economic situation in Batangas with the pandemic? Now, how are, could you tell us how people are um, coping, surviving with the local industries, I guess, being uh, shut down as well and what government interventions are being instituted? Thank you, Paul. Well, uh, we are finding a lot of opportunities actually to develop and to have more visitors uh, in our uh, in our uh, business uh, tourism, if you want to call it that way. We are right now uh, continuing the development of our food terminal, uh, and we have now already starting around 10 billion projects already in our food terminal. The food port, which is adjacent to it, uh, another project of uh, the province to have a provincial food port uh, is going on. Uh, that's a 1 billion, 1.5 billion project. And the national government has helped us already with uh, uh, half a billion. Again, giving work and again, having investors, not from Batangas, but from other places going there, uh, even international investors. And the Department of Agriculture has already declared that uh, Batangas now is the uh, uh, gateway of the agri-industrial business corridor, which is needed for the food supply chain of the country because of our proximity to what well, we are in the most populated region, which is Calabarzon. And again, uh, adjacent contiguous is uh, Metro Manila, uh, the national capital region, and the other big regions, uh, region three and all. So uh, here, there is need of course for food. Uh, so uh, even our fisheries uh, development corporation, that is the one in charge of infrastructure when it comes to fisheries, like putting up fish ports, like what we have in uh, General Santos. In uh, now we are uh, they already have we already have a, a, an understanding that they're going to put the regional uh, the the regional for the whole region affecting, of course, not only. Uh, Calabarzon, Cavite, Laguna, Batangas, uh, Rizal, Quezon, but also the island provinces of uh, Palawan, Marinduque, uh, Rumblon, Mindoro, the two Mindoros. So this is going to be the center. This is going to be, well, more known in the Philippines is Navotas, okay? Uh, and of course, General Santos and Iloilo. So this is going to be now the new uh, regional uh, fish port. And uh, this is so augmented. Uh, we're just finalizing right now. Uh, the center also of uh, livestock processing. Well, everybody have, every, everybody has already heard about the Batangas beef, the famous Batangas beef. Huh? Uh, traditionally, we are known for beef. Now, together with the Department of Agriculture and the uh, Korean government, they're going to put the, uh, the, the, the slaughterhouse, the meat processing in the province of Batanga. As a matter of fact, they've already started with uh, a 50 million slaughterhouse. Uh, in, so we are, uh, th this is now an opportunity uh, for us in terms of, uh, well, this is in terms of economics, as you have mentioned, but we are doing it also in terms of uh, tourism, huh? uh, specifically. The, we, well, today, uh, we already published the bid documents for the establishment of the Batangas uh, Tourism and Cultural Center. Huh? It is on a three hectare property on the capital site, right on the uh, community park at the back of the uh, provincial capital. And we, could, we would see there uh, that 
So we are going to put up uh, not less than 10 billion, uh, not less than 10 billion uh, buildings, towers, but we are going to have our convention center for uh, 3,000 people, hotel rooms and condo hotels and even apartments. Uh, uh, and it is, uh, well, adjacent to the uh, regional hospital, a me medical center, and of course the capital. And this will be really serving not only tourists, but also uh, the investors, because there will be also offices and commercial area. So it's an integrated development and a three hectare property. We could see that the bidding has been published today in our local newspaper. Uh, so, so you could see that in, in the middle of crisis, there are always opportunities. Huh? There are always, and that is what we are, uh, uh, continuous, for example, expansion of the uh, natural uh, gasification program, uh, the liquefied natural gas, huh? uh, and uh, by first gen, the one supplying 2,000 megawatts. Uh, now, the, the natural gas coming from Palawan, from Malampaya, 100% goes to Batangas. We have, they, uh, that supply has to be augmented uh, by imported liquefied natural gas. So there are activities which are going on. The Monte Maria development, again, is again being expanded. More hotel rooms are being placed there. This is the one that I was mentioning right in front of the Verde Island passage, which is the center of the center of marine biodiversity. Uh, as we talk, we have uh, uh, there uh, a, a condo hotel, uh, 200 rooms being developed. And one of the developers is actually, uh, well, from the US, uh, the Filipino of this uh, Asian journal, which is also going around there in, uh, in New, even in New York, of course, in California, in Nevada, and all these places. I'm sure he's a member of your uh, association. Yes. Uh, the Asian uh, Journal. Uh, Roger Oriel uh, is one of the promoters of that one. Uh, so it's always, that's one of, so that's how we are coping. Actually, we are not coping. We are really improving. Shining. We are developing in the midst of uh, this pandemic. It is a tremendous opportunity. We are, we are spending two billion in new hospitals, uh, improving our present hospitals, buying new equipment, CT scans and all that. Huh? Uh, in, in education, uh, we are improving. We are giving, we have given already more than 2000 laptops to public school teachers. And right now we have a uh, 200 million budgeted already and funded, uh, which we will give to all the barangays. Uh, so that, you know, tourism now has been devolved. Uh, just early part of this uh, month, J J June 2nd, to be precise, uh, the president has already ex issued the executive order to implement the Supreme Court decision uh, to give the full share of the collection of national government. This is a land, uh, you would say, uh, really uh, a very, very important uh, legislation. And well, modestly aside, it's named as Mandana's uh, ruling of the Supreme Court. In other words, uh, effectively what will happen is that the share in the national taxes will increase for all, not only for, and development will start on the local level. And so it would increase by, if you could, the, the, this decision became final and executory in 2019, uh, but uh, it's only next year that's going to be implemented. Uh, and it would, compared to 2019, the share would increase by 100% of the barangays, of the towns and cities and provinces. Uh, in other words, we will be the one who will have the funds and we will be the ones to implement the devolved services. And one of the devolved services, of course, is tourism. Huh? 
well, together, of course, with social service, health, uh, agriculture, which is part of the, which the main trust of, of the economy right now and which give more work huh? and thank you, invite Governor. really a lot of investments. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Governor. Thank I know you, you, you answered this partly, but the next question is, uh, when it comes to medical facilities, um, Felix Manuel asked, uh, he's undergoing dialysis three times a week and um, are there kidney dialysis or uh, kidney centers that can cater to you know, people like uh, Felix who's on vacation and has medical conditions? Um, I wanna ask this question to uh, Governor Yap first. Yeah, thank you, Don. Um, that's one of the things that we're working on during this pandemic is upgrading all our medical uh, services and our facilities. Uh, even as we speak, uh, additional um, dialysis chairs are arriving in the town of Talibon this week. And hopefully by the month of July or at the latest by the next month, we will have fully operational additional uh, dialysis seats outside of Tagbilaran City. And this is the first time that this is happening in our province. And uh, from there, we're taking these um, dialysis services to the towns of Carmen and Hagna. And these are strategically positioned uh, around the province of Bohol so that we can cluster the medical services uh, around the needs of our people. So aside from that, uh, we're also modernizing our agriculture at this point in time. Um, it is uh, really, it says a lot that more than 700,000 of uh, Buholanos remain in the rural uh, sector, in the agriculture sector. And yet the value of that part of our economy is only producing 5%. 78% of the value that's being created in our economy is coming from services and tourism. So there is an imbalance there. So there we're also putting a lot of attention right now. And we welcome the Mandana's ruling of the Supreme Court because through the hard efforts of Governor Dodo Mandanas of Batangas, as he was telling you, and that's the reason why the Supreme Court ruling bears his name, is because he was the one who did the human's job of filing uh, painstakingly, uh, uh, sacrificing so that the, uh, the income of the local governments will be augmented from a wider source of funds. No? And that has now come to pass. And so the president has signed executive order 138 and uh, uh, fully giving the green light for the implementation of added funds to the local governments. And that's the reason why we will be receiving more funds for social services, for health, for agriculture and tourism. And even while we have not yet received uh, done the full funds, we are already putting the framework of our programs in social services, health, agriculture and tourism so that when the funds come in, then it will be easy to launch these programs. Thank you very much for the question, uh, Don. Thank you, Governor. See, uh, Mil Mili Santa Maria Tomashak has a question about, um, you know how a lot of the internet sites na, um, like booking.com, Orbitz, or Expedia, they have good hotel packages in Bohol. Um, can we assume that these hotels that have, are, have been cleared by the province as uh, you know, as meeting the pandemic protocol standards. Uh, Governor, yeah. Uh, when it, they must find a, a way to ask um, the, uh, the establishment if they have been uh, UBE accredited. You know? uh, number one, the minimum is they will not be allowed to operate in Orbit, uh, Expedia, Agoda, or in booking.com if they don't have minimum the Department of Tourism certification to operate. But uh, beyond that, please inquire whether they have the UBE seal, the ultimate whole experience seal, because these are the ones that have been uh, benchmarked against international standards. So that will really help if uh, they can find a way to talk to the property and ask Don if they have been accredited with the province of Bohol and its UBE seal. Thank you, Governor. Um, Governor Mandanas, there's a question from Ricky Riliera, and he said that, uh, oh, you mentioned about the Center of Marine Biodiversity is still being developed. So when is it scheduled to be completed? And uh, are there any plans to develop the Mabini House as a national shrine now? Governor? Uh, well, let me first 
answer the first question regarding dialysis uh, uh, equipment uh, because we know that that is very important for visitors and of to the province of Batangas not only dialysis but the other uh, that but the other uh, health facilities that is I think essential uh, that visitors tourists uh, should have all the necessary emergency facilities. Uh, in diving, for example, we should have the necessary compressors available, uh, which uh, <clears throat> in our provincial hospital, we had, been, we had that since before, since I was governor in the, in the 1990s. Uh, so, and now we're expanding. We have, we have now budgeted and we have the funds for another 2 billion uh, for all dialysis machines, more ICU centers, uh, new hospital, new medical center. Uh, we have that already. It's funded. It's being constructed. The others, are, uh, the the equipment are being acquired right now. And uh, very important also is transportation. Uh, we are giving every barangay in the province of Batangas an ambulance cum evacuation facility uh, vans. We call them the multi-purpose rescue vans. So there you have oxygen, medical equipment, uh, radio communication, uh, in case of emergency, because we, we know that, you know, all these resorts, all these developments, they're all in the barangays. And well, they, of course, they're primarily for the residents, uh, not, not, uh, not they will be, they're very helpful for our tourists because they, we have so many domestic tourists because of our uh, uh, proximity uh, to the populated areas of Calabarzon, this is Rizal, Cabitel, and of course, the Metro Manila. Uh, you know, the combined population of this really, uh, you're, you're talking about uh, uh, more than 30 million people. Okay, and uh, if even during this pandemic, they're all reeling out to go. Uh, really, of course, couldn't be disciplined sometimes. That's why uh, our, uh, you know, number of persons affected, uh, well, it's, it's been high, and now fortunately going down. So, and these medical facilities are very important. So we have the funding they're going on right now, including dialysis and the support. Because as you there in the United States, we all know that all these dialysis patients uh, are like and seniors and all they they're picked up and they return to their houses. Uh, so every barangay in Batangas by September, because we have ordered them already, we have committed more than a billion pesos buying them. Okay, and uh, now to be delivered in well the delivery starts actually. Uh, next month, but will be distributed in barangays by September. Huh? That would help very much in tourism and, and of course, uh, having the facilities. Now, with regard to the marine biodiversity, actually the development there would be the development of uh, those unsure, you know, making the fishermen, uh, the, the, the fishermen, making them instead uh, you would call uh, tourism guides because these areas have been declared as uh, reserve area. I mean, they're, they're really marine uh, reserve area, which means you cannot go uh, spear fishing, you cannot go fishing. Huh? So giving them livelihood as tourism center or what we call Bantai Dagat, like uh, guardians of the sea so that uh, not only from the point of view of environment, but also really destruction of uh, of all these facilities. Now, being really uh, recognized, well, the the Verde Island Passage is really recognized already. Recognized by the United Nations, recognized by Smithsonian, recognized, of course, by the Philippines. Gloria Maca President Gloria Macapag Arroyo issued already extended the. Uh, the uh, the issued already the executive order 
way back in uh, 2007, I believe. And I was there in the Smithsonian. Uh, it was a meeting of United Nations of the, what, and it's because this marine biodiversity is also part of the United Nations program of the Golden uh, Coral Triangle, which is part of the food survival of the entire world. Uh, because of course the seas would be source of uh, renewable uh, supply of food. Huh? Uh, and there, the Philippines is in the center of this golden, uh, uh, this, this golden coral triangle, including Indonesia, of course, uh, all the South Vietnam, and the, all the way to uh, uh, to, uh, to Borneo, all this whole area of, of Asia. Uh, so that was I'm mentioning that uh, it's already recognized. It's already Thank recognized. You. Thank you so much, Governors, Governor Hermilando Mandanas, uh, Governor Michael Tan, and Governor Arthur, Arthur Yap. Maraming salamat pong sa inyong lahat. And now I would like to call on um, Jobert uh, Opalancha back. Jobert? Uh, just before I close, uh, I'd like uh, to uh, send a message from Governor Escudero due to a very important meeting that he had to attend. He had to excuse himself but uh, we're having uh, um, Las Playas Filipinas for July, and that will be our part two, and he promised to join us. In behalf of the Philippine American Press Club of New York and its partner in this presentation, we would like to extend our appreciation to Consul General here in New York, Ambassador Elmer Cato, and to our panelists, Governor Dodo Mandana, Governor Mike Khan, Governor Art Yap, for taking time out of their busy schedule to be with us and for their outstanding presentation. To Jos Vasquez and the American Press Club of New York and its members, thank you for all the support you have so kindly extended to our monthly virtual presentation. To all our Balik Bayans around the US, Canada, and the world, remember, this is the time that your country needs you. And what a better way to assist your motherland by coming home and be with your loved ones. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of first, our um, tourism attache for New York, Mr. Frank Lardisabal, who has joined us the president of uh, Pacific Asia Travel Association, Elizabeth Chen, and a group with their president and members, the United Travel Agencies and Operation Association from the Philippines. See you next month for the ninth virtual presentation of Kapihang sa New York, Las Playas, Filipinas Part 2. Mabuhay at maraming salamat po. Thank you so much, everyone. Salamat. journeys from the beauty of our nature to the warmth of our people fly with the airline that lets you feel the heart of the filipino thank you salama Hi. see you next time hi everyone Thank you. Thanks, Governor Yap. Thanks, Lama Governor po. Mandanas. Lama sa lahat. Thanks, Thank Don. You, Thanks, Jobert, Grace. Thank you, everyone. See you next month.
Take care, everyone. Elmer Cato, thank you. Bonjen Cato, thanks a lot. Maraming salamat po. <laughs> Hi, Josh. Welcome back. <laughs> salamat, Josh. Kathy, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good job, everyone. Thank you.